previously in Breaking Point. Aidan, please tell us, how does it feel to be on the verge of getting behind the wheel for your very first race? I feel like a little kid. I look around and I'm surrounded by my heroes. And tell me about Casper Ackerman. How is that relationship coming along? It wasn't my fault. Well, whose fault was it then? He tried to stop them from signing you. Didn't want to play babysitter. We all feel sorry for you, mate. You never stood a chance with him. I had a call this morning from Christian Horner. You're being watched. You know what his problem is, don't you? Thinks you're getting too old. You want respect? You give respect! That's how it works! How about you give me a little respect? How about you earn it first? I'm done. You what? I'm retiring. Why didn't it work out between you two? He's on more money than me. What? He didn't want me on the team. Didn't I? And you thought I was past my best. So none of this is true? There's always gossip in the paddock. And ever since he's arrived, it's been one man at the center of it all. I want us to push for fourth. I want us to beat Butler. And I want that seat to go to you. So Alfa Romeo potentially on track to really upset Alfa Tauri here. Butler's closing in on Ackerman. Down the inside he goes, and they hit each other. Butler into the barrier, and that looks to be the end of the race for him. The Dutchman looks to be continuing at. It's great to see him still in this fight, Crofty. Go for third, eight. What about Casper? We let Aiden pass. Let Aiden pass. We did it. We did it. Have you seen the crash yet? Butler's okay? Bruised ego, perhaps. <laughs> What was it like bringing a brand new team to the F1 grid? You know, the first time you see a car, your car, with your branding, your name on it, in an official race, alongside Ferrari, McLaren, Mercedes, that's what it's all about. You make it sound like a dream come true. If only. When did you first get a sense of what was in store for Connor Sport? 2022 season, <clears throat> straight out of the box. The drivers were always going to clash. That was a calculated risk. But the car, mm, the car, the car had problems. We're midway through the Miami Grand Prix. It's been a cracking race so far, and it's all up for grabs. Absolutely, Crofty. Some fantastic driving here today. Especially, I have to say, from Aidan Jackson. I don't think I've ever seen the Connor Sport car being put through its paces quite like this. This is a team, Connor Sport, that have got a lot to prove this season, but Jackson might just be the man to do it. OK, Aidan, nice job so far. Let's try and bring that gap down to the car ahead if you can. Copy that.
You're in the top ten now. Keep it up. coming to fit the mediums. Car ahead, now running medium tyres. Okay, keep an eye on that gap ahead, please. 4.1 seconds. Power! Why am I losing power? 
Copy that, we see it, we're looking into it. Okay, I'm afraid you're gonna have to retire the car, please, Aiden. Retire the car. Uh, you're joking! I'm sorry, Aiden. Pull over now, please. Pull over now. This is getting ridiculous! And that's agonizing for Jackson. Just a few laps left to go, and he's out of the Miami Grand Prix. Oh, with every race, the car looks like a constant problem for Connor Sport. It must be devastating for the drivers. Confirmation as the car comes to a halt, the Connor Sports Aiden Jackson won't be seeing the checkered flag today. But it looks like his teammate will. Jackson's DNF puts Devon Butler in a position where he might just be able to secure some points for Connor Sports. Aiden's out. Yep, engine problem, I'm afraid. <laughs> Good job you got me! All right, Devon, don't push it too hard. We cannot risk losing both cars here. It's in the bag, mate. All OK, Aiden. <sighs> yeah, uh, how's Devon doing? Yeah, he's doing all right, mate. He looks like he's going to bring home some points for the team. Good for him. If it's not one thing, then it's another. Did you not see what happened out there today? Aiden, I agree with you 100%. We are doing everything we can. I know the car is not perfect, but... Andreo, it's every race. Do you know how I look losing easy points like this? Knock, knock. <laughs> Sounds like there's a right show going on in here. What am I missing? Not now, Devon. Aiden and I were just discussing issues with the car. Again? I thought that was all in hand. I had no problems today. Smooth. You know what they say, a shoddy workman always blames his tools. <laughs> mate, 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 mate. You can look at my setup data any time you want. I've told you that. It might help. And I've told you before. It's not a setup issue. The problem is... Jackson, that was the problem with the 2022 season. Ask anyone. I mean, at the end of 21, everyone thought Aiden was going to be signed by one of the big three. But I uh, guess they couldn't reach an agreement, so we both signed for Connor Sport. And do you think that affected Aiden? <laughs> That's no secret. No. For that 22 season, Jackson was a nightmare. Aiden, hey, 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 I wanted to give you a heads up. Now look, the crew has shared the latest telemetry data with us. Fine, um, but I, I don't think it will tell me anything I don't already know. Just humor me, okay? I'd like you to go through it. Let me know if anything jumps out. I'm keen to iron out these problems as quickly as possible for you. Sure thing. Thanks, Andrea. No thanks needed. I've got your back, Aiden. Remember what I said when you joined the team. I won't let you down. Akamon wouldn't let me hear the end of it. <laughs> yeah, sounds like Casper. Y you know he told me the same, right? It's just... It's just tricky, what with the car and... Devin poking his nose in any chance he gets. There is a lot going on, for sure, but we're a team. We'll get there. I'll have a word with the Devon. Tell him to give you some space both on and off the track, okay? <laughs> yeah, all right. Good luck with that.
Hey, boss, got a couple of minutes? Into turn two we go now. Butler comes out of the pit lane. Jackson is right there with him. This is dicey, Ant. Neither one of these two wants to give way. This would have been a lot cleaner if Jackson had just let him go. He's just not giving him an inch. They continue onwards, still wheel to wheel, almost touching there as well, as we head down the straight towards the next chicane. Nothing to separate either car, and through the chicane we go. And now Jackson sends them both off the track and Butler over a curb. That looked nasty. And I do believe that one of their cars is damaged here, Crofty. I think it's Butler. Damage, Ant, but also they've lost places too. Unbelievable and totally unnecessary as well. Well, one damaged car, places now to make up. What a complete mess that was. Okay, calm yourself down. We'll look at it in the debrief later, but right now I want you to go and get those places back. Come on, let's go. Nice move, good job.
that's just five laps of fuel remaining. We're leading the car behind by 4.1 seconds. Okay, you're in the top 10. Yellow flag. Okay, clear. Okay, we've got four laps of fuel remaining. Okay, here's the gap that we're trading the car ahead by. 2.4 seconds. Okay, gap to the car behind. Car behind. 5.3 seconds. We've only got two laps of fuel left. Okay, this is your final lap, final lap of the race. Okay, so we're leading our teammate by 29.7 seconds.
And that's the end of the race. We'll see you in Park Fermi. So it's been a day of drama here at the circuit Gilles Villeneuve today. But Ant, what stood out for you? Well, it must be the Connor Sport moment between the two drivers there. Banging wheels, not giving each other room on track. It was entertaining, of course, but definitely for all the wrong reasons. Yeah, we enjoyed it, certainly. And Aidan Jackson, well, he'd have enjoyed the result. He did well to recover. He did do well to recover, but, you know, you never want to see two cars, if, if you're the team boss, seeing two cars hit each other. It's rule number one. Don't hit your teammate. Given all the problems they've had this season, though, getting one car over the finish line, that's probably a big result for them today. And here we are, a team that is no stranger to the podium, taking their place on top once again. A sublime race today and a stunning win for Ferrari. Aiden, just uh, just a heads up. We're putting the debrief back by 30 minutes. Okay, thanks for letting me know. Listen, while I've got you on, what happened out there today? It wasn't my fault. Devon thinks he's the only one driving. I don't want to dwell on it too much at the meeting, but this is not how you run a team. You know this. Of course. It's just... No, no, I don't want to hear it. We have enough problems as it is. Whatever has gone on between you two in the past, I need you to put it to bed. Sure. I don't want to have to talk to you like this, Aiden, and I'll be saying the same to Devon. Come on now. Sure. See you at the debrief. Hey there, can you uh, raise that lamp about six inches, right? Excellent. A butler should always look sharp. <laughs> so. At what point in the 22 season was it clear to you that the team was struggling? Oh, well, right after the Hungarian GP. I may only be the money, but even to me, it was obvious. The whole thing was a sham. Yet again, Connor Sports Jackson and Butler battling it out on track. It seems as Hang if Hang on, they... two seconds, Nat. OK, Devon, Aidan's lapping faster than you. I need you to let him pass, please. Devon, do you copy? Listen to me, I need you to let Aidan pass now. Butler just completely blanking the order there. Seems like he didn't even acknowledge it. Too true, but as you can see, no way through for Jackson. No way at all. This Connor Sport rivalry is getting heated on the track here in Hungary. Seven seconds.
Okay, so the gap to the car ahead, 1.8 seconds. Okay, you're in the top 10. Five laps of fuel remaining. Okay, keep an eye on that gap ahead, please. 4.3 seconds. We've got enough fuel for three more laps. Okay, so the gap to the car behind is 2.6 seconds. Okay, here's the gap that we're trailing the car ahead by, 2.9 seconds.
Okay, just two laps of fuel remaining now. seconds. Superb driving. That is the race win, my friends. Well done. So, Nats, who else out there deserves a mention today? Well, I feel like there are a couple, but let's start with Aidan Jackson. Couldn't agree more. Jackson had a brilliant race, didn't he? Yeah, we know Connor's Sport have struggled all season. Jackson's done really well today, and that's in spite of the problems with his own teammate. Even before they became teammates, these two had their fair share of run-ins. It's a fascinating rivalry. You can't take your eyes off it for one moment. But nonetheless, some much-needed points today for Connor Sport. A show-stopping performance from the three drivers approaching the... Well, a good race out there again today, Adam. But what we do all want to know, what exactly happened with Devon? It sounded like he completely ignored a direct team order. <laughs> yeah, what do you expect? It's Devon. He was out of order out there. Uh, he really needs to rein it in. He's not the only one driving. I'm sure the team will have a lot to say about it. Well, he did certainly seem to cause you some trouble out there today. And after that, and what happened in Canada, what would you say to those wondering if the old Jackson Butler rivalry is well and truly back? <laughs> No, that's, that's in the past, definitely. Uh, we're on the same team now. That's what matters. If there's anything that happens between me and Devon on track, it's because we're, we're so focused on making Connors a success. We're bound to tread on each other's toes from time to time. So issues with Devon aside, how do you feel it went out there today? Do you think the team will be pleased with your performance? Uh, yeah, I think so. I did everything I could today and, you know, the car performed really well. Uh, I think I found some good pace, and, uh, yeah, forgetting any other hiccups, I think the team will be happy. So, you mentioned the car there. In that regard, Connor Sports not had the easiest of times so far this season. Has that all been sorted? Are those reliability concerns well and truly behind you? I hope so. I mean, today was good, yeah. There was no issues with the car. It's, uh, it's always difficult when a driver brings everything they've got, and the car lets them down at the last minute. But, you know, I've been told the team has, has got it all under control, so... Yeah, we'll see what happens in the next few races. Well, thank you for chatting with us. Great to have your time.
Okay. I'll leave that in your capable hands. <sighs> Devon. You had a problem with the team order today? Didn't happen. What? Look, I know everyone's saying I ignored it, but it didn't happen. I never got the order. Check the comms. Shoddy workman always blames his tools, eh? Check the comms. Okay, we check the communication pipeline. Fix it. This cannot happen again. Typical. Aiden, listen. What's the point? It's just Devon being Devon. And what? That makes it okay? He's an arrogant... No, you're right to call him out. But imagine if we didn't give him certain freedoms. He'd be even harder to manage. As his father, I know. Aiden, you're the best driver that we have. And it's right for you to put Devon in his place. He needs it. The team needs it. Thanks. Between you and me, I don't think this team is right for me. I think... Honestly, we don't deserve you. And I know that you're being discussed at other teams, so just keep doing what you're doing. Sure. I'm sorry if I've spoken out of turn. About Devon? <laughs> Not at all. You know the best way to keep Devon in his place? What's that? Beat him. Could you take a look at this, please? Hey, we need your input on this one. So, what about Callie Mayer? Was she on your radar at this point? Of course. She was making big waves in F2. And Ackerman would not shut up about her. our race leader, Callie Mayer. She has been blisteringly fast around Zandvoort here today. Hey, look at that! She's going into pit! Interesting strategy they've decided on there. She has been lapping at rapid pace, but is this the right call? Yeah, it's a bold move for sure. Looks crazy to me, but let's find out. She goes then on brand new tyres. The rest of the field still sticking with their original set. Where exactly does Callie Mayer come out? Let's see. Okay, Callie, let's go. We're going to leave it to you. You know what to do. Come on. Copy that. I want it.
straight, no issues with tyre wear for now. Keep taking care of them. Yellow flag. Final lap, keep your concentration and let's bring it home. Superb driving. That is the race win, my friends. Well done. Pally Mayer, take a bow. What a masterclass to finish first here in the Netherlands. It was such an unlikely strategy from Mayer, but she and the team have made a success of it. What a race, what a performance, what a genuine joy to watch. It's the part we've all been waiting for, the podium finish, and it's probably one of the more unexpected finishes in a while. Trident take the victory, and Trident have made huge strides within F2 recently, and today proves that they're not only still in the race, but they're in it to win. Congratulations to everyone on the team. Kelly, what do you put your success down to this season? Oh, I'd say probably my speed. In what way? I find lapping faster than everyone else really, really helps. Casper, <laughs> Casper. No, no, no. Seriously, though, I have a great team around me, and this guy, more than anyone else, has been pretty useful to have around. Casper, <laughs> what are you shy? Come up here. Yes. <laughs> okay, okay. And Callie says you've been a factor this season, Casper. I'm not the one driving. Didn't agree with my tyre strategy, though. <laughs> this one has no respect for her elders. <laughs> but can you give us more detail as to the exact role you've played? None whatsoever. It's all about her. He's probably right, to be fair. So, were you already in touch with Casper Ackerman at that point? <laughs> 
Ackerman and I go way back. Let me guess, you saw the race, could it be prouder, and everyone in the office wouldn't stop screaming? <laughs> well, that saved me a few minutes. Guess I'll speak to you later then. <laughs> How are you, Mum? Oh, I couldn't be prouder, Cal. That was one hell of a race. Everyone in the office wouldn't stop screaming. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Honestly? The way you're driving, I think we're going to have to change your name. What's here this time? Cali Winner. You've got this in the bag, Cal. Oh, okay. That, that is the kind of award-winning journalism that we really do need right now, but one race at a time, okay? <laughs> that sounds like Casper talking. Is he looking after you? Yeah, yeah, always. Oh, actually, I've got a meeting with him that I'm running a bit late for, so I've got a dash, I'm sorry. Oh, okay, sweetheart. Call me tonight and well done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, boss. Got another one for you. Hey boss, got a couple of minutes? Okay, mate, I need you to push before the pit window opens. Push, push. On it. Okay, gaps of the car ahead is 4.9 seconds. Job, nice overtake.
gap to the car in front is 3.0 seconds. Another pit stop here at Suzuka. This time it's Aiden Jackson coming in. He's been making steady progress today and Connor Sport need him to. They desperately need some results and they could do without this. And look, there's chaos in that garage. Absolutely, only three wheels on the car at the moment, Crofty. Aiden Jackson looks on in despair. Here comes that spare wheel now. That's a long, long time to wait. Just sat in the cockpit. What is going on down at Connor Sport? Well, the tyre is finally out of the garage and on the car, and Aidan Jackson's back out in the race, but it's a long time in the pit, and that will cost them dearly. What was that? How many places did I lose? OK, try not to worry about that, Aidan. Just focus on the race, get your head down, and let's pull it back. Uh, I'm sick of this! Okay, that's us with five laps of fuel remaining, five laps of fuel left. Okay, gap ahead is 2.3 seconds.
Brilliant. Nice move. Keep going. Okay, we've got four laps of fuel remaining. We've only got two laps of fuel left. Okay, mate, this is the final lap of the race. The final lap.
Oh, superb driving. That is the race win, my friend. Well done. Well, it's still too close to call at the top of the table. Meanwhile, at the other end, Ant, you can really understand Aidan Jackson's frustrations today. Yeah, they've had car problems all season long, Crofty. They've had a bad mix-up in the garage today, and Connor Sport won't be proud of that one. And Connor Sport won't be proud of that. It's the longest pit stop we've had this season. Not the sort of record any team wants to set. Here comes your top three making their way down to the podium for what can only be described as a fantastic day for four. Well, Aidan, I'm sure you already know what I'm going to ask. That pit stop looked like a nightmare. So what on earth happened today? Yeah, well, we know that every race has a hiccup, so you can just never tell when it's going to happen. you just got to be ready and roll with the punches. I guess on the plus side, a mess up like that means that this mistake will never happen again. Well, there is a lot of talk on social media about whether Devon is actually getting preferential treatment by the team. So do you think, is there any truth to that? Or is it an unfair assumption? I couldn't possibly comment about that. I'll let everyone draw their own conclusions. Well, Aidan, the list seems to get longer. Car reliability, you and Devon bumping wheels, and now issues in the pit lane. Huge mounting problems at Connor Sport. Has there been any talk at all about what the team might do next season, considering that you and Devon just don't seem to get along? Yeah, I've been thinking about next season. But who knows what the future will bring. At the moment, it's all about Connor Sport and bringing in as many points as I can. And finally, I've got to ask you about this. It has been reported that Mercedes have agreed a deal for George Russell to play a small part in the latest Throttle Zone movie. What do you make of that? Yeah, what's all that about? I mean, good luck to him and all, but um, it's not something that I personally find exciting, so... I hope everyone enjoys the film. That's great, thank you. Talk to me. About what? You saw the race, right? What is there to say? Thought you could do with blowing off a little steam. <laughs> what is even the point in wasting any more energy? If it's not the car, it's the team. If it's not the team, it's the car. No one seems to care how much effort I'm putting into all of this. Which is why you need to double down. Listen, I promised I wouldn't say anything, but the top three are talking, Aiden. What? What? They've already reached out to us. Looks like there might be some last-minute negotiations on the cards, but... Keep that to yourself, okay? Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. No doubt there'll be some wrangling. You're contracted for another season, but your, um... Tenacity has been noticed. Wow, uh... I don't know what to say. Don't say anything you're not supposed to know. I hate to admit it, but Connor Sport can't keep up with you, Aiden. Just do me a favor, would you? Uh, yeah, uh, sure. What is it? I need you to push as hard as you can to get as much out of you before I lose you to a better team. Can you do that for me? Of course. No problem. Good boy. You know I'm here whenever you need me. Speak soon. You saw it, right? The pit stop? How am I supposed to deal with that? I know. I want a chance to prove what I can do, though. In a top-tier seat. I, I deserve it. I've heard there might be interest. I just... I can't stay here. Okay. Well, what would you do? So, what advice did you give him? Well, I told him to try to stay calm, see out the season, and then go to the final team meeting. See if that changed his mind. And where were you at this point? Oh, I was uh, busy getting Cali ready for the final race of the F2 season.
The final race of the season now well underway here in Abu Dhabi. A few different drivers in contention for the F2 Championship. But here's the favourite, Callie Mayer. She's been so consistent this season, so fast. My money's on Mayer for the championship, no question. If she can finish high enough, the title belongs to her. Good, Cali. Come on, a podium should clinch this for us. Then podium it is.
started the final lap of the race. Final lap. Congratulations! <laughs> Callie Mayer, get used to the name. She has her whole career ahead of her, and this is just the beginning. She's done it, as many predicted she would. A star is born. Callie Mayer becomes the first woman ever to win the F2 Championship. Historic. <laughs> well, I mean, someone had to be the first. But I just hope that this shows that talent can get you as far as money. And what about your dad? Has he called to congratulate you yet, Kelly? Nope. Next question. Hey, Kelly, Kelly, what's it like being a woman in motorsports? We're sure everyone wants to know. <sighs> I don't know, John. What's it like being a man in journalism? <laughs> Next question. Hot-headed, <laughs> yes, for sure, for sure. But you know, that's, that's kind of what you need in a driver. Let's not forget that Cali taking the championship was a big deal. You know, for, well, for the sport, but really for everyone. And for you, how did you feel? It was one of the proudest moments of my career. It was the first time I mentored anyone, yeah. I was a little sad to be moving on. So, had you already told Callie about your new job? Yes, yes, of course. And I told her, you know, how I wished that I could take her with me. But she understood. And Aidan, had you told him? No. No, he was, um, he was too busy. Busy? Yeah, preparing to tell the team that he was leaving Connorsport. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming. I know Aiden had something he wanted to say, but first, I have a matter I would like to address formally. It is no secret that I have been spread a little thin <laughs> this season. I mean, I own the team, I run the team, it's, it's a lot, okay? Which is why I will be stepping away from the principal role next season. I'll still be pushing Connor Sport Racing to be the brand we know it can be whilst the new principal will be laser-focused on performance and results. And we have already found a man to step into that role. Kasper. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Now, this is a big step up for me. I'm really looking forward to see what next season brings. It's truly an honor to be on board. I am sorry for the dramatic nature of the announcement, okay? Humor the man 
who pays you. <laughs> we all look forward to working with Casper, yes? Good. Then let us continue. Aiden, you had something you wanted to say? The floor is yours. <sighs> no, it's, it's nothing. I just wanted to say... <clears throat> um, thank you, everybody, for all your hard work this year. And I'm really looking forward to next season. Especially with Casper at the helm. Did Casper being around affect you going into the 23 season? I have bigger things going on than Casper. Do you have any regrets about 2023? Anything you'd have done differently? No. No, I'm in a good place now. Besides, what's to uh, regret about being the story of the season? It's race day, it's secure under the lights, and it's lovely to have you with us for the Bahrain Grand Prix. We'll be racing around 3.36 miles of the magnificent Bahrain International Circuit today. Keep an eye out for drivers locking the front left down into the tricky braking zone of turn 10. So with the race not far away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Max Verstappen put in a fantastic lap yesterday and he'll start from pole position with Charles Leclerc alongside. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Fernando Alonso, Russell, Perez, Hamilton, Sainz, Stroll, Ocon, Norris, Albon, Oscar Piastri, Butler, Jackson, Gasly, Sonoda, Bottas, Sargent, Joe, Magnussen, De Vries, and Nico Hülkenberg rounds off the grid. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head down trackside for today's race. 2023 Bahrain, we're about to get going and I hope you've enjoyed the build up just as much as we have. The teams are ready on the grid, they're ready in the garages too, but in the commentary box alongside me, are you ready Ant? Of course I'm ready, Crofty. New season, new challenges for all of them out there, drivers and teams. I love this part of the year, Crofty. This is where it really kicks off and you get to showcase all that hard work you've done through the winter months. Does it pay off? Yeah, that's the question, isn't it? What does the 2023 season have in store for us? We're about to find out. OK, Devon, it's a brand new season. You know that, so let's start it as we mean to go on, OK? OK? Let's get out there, come on.
Turbo, you made it look so easy. We can now use CRS. CRS now available. now and you're going to be on hard next time.
this lap, in this lap, push now. OK, stay clear of the white line on the exit. We'll receive a penalty for dangerous driving if you cross onto the track. Aiden's in the pits, Aiden in the pits.
today. That's us with five laps of fuel remaining. Five laps of fuel left. Got enough fuel for three more laps.
Okay, mate, this is the final lap of the race. Final lap. Fantastic drive, that's just fantastic, amazing, you deserve that race win, well done mate. Meanwhile, plenty of surprises in the midfield, so where do we start at? Well I think we have to look at Connor Sport, and for me they've been the biggest surprise so far, and Butler, he's doing fantastically well. The thing is though, they've got to sustain that over the course of the whole season, and that is easier said than done. Certainly one Kasper Ackerman will be hoping that this season is better than his last. The faces on our top three look so incredibly... What a start to the season, Devon. You must be happy with that performance. You know, sometimes I wonder if anyone's been paying attention. You know, I, I've always been fast. <laughs> Everyone saw the problems we had with the car last season. Everyone saw that. Now this season, I get to drive a car that works, and surprise, surprise, I smash it. It's not rocket science. Well, you've had your share of run-ins in the past with teammate Aidan Jackson. Crucial question is, is that behind you? How do you feel about him right now? Ah, listen, Aidan is the greatest F1 driver of all time. You ask him, he'll tell you. What, you, you think I've got an attitude problem? Aidan has got stealth ego, let me tell you. You, you don't know it's there and then it emerges. He's, uh, well, he's, he's a handful. Uh, trust me. Well, Connor Sport surprised everyone by appointing Casper Ackerman as team principal this season. So how do you feel about taking orders from someone that you've got such a history with? I think he's going to do a terrific job, you know? Uh, mainly because he's got me on his team, so uh, he can't go too far wrong. Now, I'm sure he's incredibly thankful to have me as a driver. Well, you're embarking on a new year, but what would a successful season look like for you in 2023? I'm making it my personal mission to make a success of Connor Sport. And by the end of the season, you're all going to be saying what a wonderful team we are and how great a season we've had. And if you're doing that, then I'll consider it a job well done. That's great. Thank you. Great race out there today, just in the highlights. Listen, I know we've had our run-ins and, well, last season was last season. A fresh start for the team. What do you say? Oh, Jackson. Yeah. Cheers, mate. Bin's over there. Yeah. Nice one. How about the season just gone? 
The 2023 season was completely different for Connorsport. How so? But, uh, the car, for one. We'd ironed out the most critical issues and it was just starting to live up to its potential. Can we talk about what happened with Devon? Yeah, what is it? Now that's how a butler takes care of business. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Carrying the team, Devon, as well as the butler name. I couldn't be happier. Yeah, yeah, went well. Well? <laughs> I can't wait to hear what those clowns Ackerman and Connor have to say. Yeah. Hmm? You okay, Devon? What? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. I'm, uh... Just adrenaline, Dad. I just, I really pushed it out there today, you know. I just need to simmer down a bit. Of course you do. Let's talk later. I'll be in meetings, but so call me whenever you like. I'm proud of you, son. Let's just make sure today's result isn't just a one-off. Eh? Yeah. All right, all right. Ciao. Here comes Butler, good pace here down the straight. Into the corner we go. That's a little too late, and he nearly goes off the track on the exit. And is that a lapse in concentration? I think just a little bit of desperate driving there, Crofty. He's pushing way too hard. I mean, there's nobody else around him at this stage. OK, Devon, we're going to have to ease off from the brakes. Is everything OK? Can you hear me? Brakes don't feel right. OK, we'll have a look at it, but you're going to see a drop off in performance, I'm afraid. What? Why? We've asked you to take it easy on the last lap, but pushing has made the issue even worse. So we're just going to have to live with it for now. What are you talking about? Listen, just do what you can, please, Devon. Come on.
five laps of fuel remaining. Okay, we've got four laps of fuel remaining. Right, we've got enough fuel for three more laps.
And that's the end of the race. We'll see you in Park Fermi. Look, this isn't the first time we've seen Devon Butler go rogue, but the question is, what are Connor Sport going to do about it? Well, it's really hard, as we've seen so many times before, Crofty, in the past, so hard to control your drivers. In a way, they're their own entity, but on the top of it, they're, they're working for the team, and that's what you want. It's a very hard situation to manage. And working for the team, Kasper Ackerman wanted to make a clean break for this year. This does feel, though, that it's something that they might have had to have dealt with last season. It's really not what they wanted. A repeat of what happened in the past, and you cannot let it go on. It can't continue. They're just damaging the reputation of the team and their own reputation as well. They have to sort it out. I'm sure they'll be having words. So it's all changed here in Australia, and as the teams acclimatise to their new standings, so will we. The drivers are en route to the podium. Now, Devon, you didn't respond to a team order today. In Hungary last season, you said it was a comms issue, but Connor Sport claimed they didn't know what that issue was. So, are they hiding something? What's really going on here? Look, anything I say is going to be taken out of context. So I'd rather not fuel that kind of speculation. I'll debrief the team, and we'll figure out how we can stop it happening again. That's, that's all there is to it. Devon, you finished the race with a compromised car today. What was that like for you? Yeah, it was pretty straightforward, you know. Um, obviously, it wasn't going as fast as we all wanted it to, but, uh, well, you saw the race. Uh, I got the best out of a bad situation. That's just what you have to do sometimes. Now, some have been saying that you do get preferential treatment because your father funds the team. What do you say to those allegations? Oh, come on, listen. A team often needs to prioritize their best driver. No big deal, happens all the time. So how do you expect Connor Sport to perform this season based on your performance so far? I expect us to win the whole thing, Natalie, you know? People talk about Mercedes and Red Bull, but people are in for quite a shock this time around because Connor Sport will be top of the constructors by the end of the season. You mark my words, you heard it here first, boom! That's great, thank you. Could you take a look at this, please? in the bud, Cass. Do you hear me? Andreo. Butler, what was that out there today? I will not have a return to last season. We are a team. He cannot be allowed to do just what he wants. Look, just calm down. I have it under control. Well, this is Devon we're talking about. There is no control. He nearly lost the car, Casper. But he didn't. You know what it gets like out there. I'm sure there's an explanation. Or an excuse. And we'll find out. I'll be raising it at the debrief, okay? So I'll report back to you. Uh, okay, um... Hang on, look, I've got to go. I've got David off on the other line. <laughs> of course you have. Enjoy. Oh, it's a... Well, it's a big deal when one of your drivers decides to do their own thing. So I called him out on it at the next team meeting. And what was Devon's reaction? Well, he denied the whole thing. You know, blamed it on a comms fail. Which I thought was strange. The same thing happened the year before when I was principal, and he gave the exact same excuse. Yeah. 
You wanted to see me? Ah, there he is. You're a difficult man to pin down. Right, I'll cut uh, right to the chase, Devon. Tell me what's happening. What are you talking about? Well, it's not just disregarding team orders. Paddock talks. People are saying you've been distracted, that you're ignoring them completely. <laughs> now, my job is to make sure the team works smoothly, like clockwork, so I'm just trying to work out what's going on. I told you, check the comms. Yeah, the comms are fine, Devon. We checked. What's going on? Nothing. Just cut that out. Show me some respect now. I heard the order. All right? You happy? Why ignore it? I'm feeling it, Cass. The pressure, paddock gossip these last couple of months. Oh, come on. You're Devon Butler. You are the paddock gossip. <laughs> You've heard what they're saying, right? You've seen what they're writing. Driving on daddy's money. It's, uh, it's making me second guess myself. Okay. We can work through that. Start changing the, the team narrative. Absolutely. But in the meantime, I'd like you to see someone from the medical team. Just to be sure. I've booked you in for this afternoon. No, no, Cass, Cass. Look, I, I've got a race to prep for, okay? I need my head in the game. I'm fine. I get that. That's fine. But I want you to see them straight after the race. Understood? Yeah. Fine. Seven seconds. Nice move, keep going.
Okay, you're in the top ten. Okay, here's the gap that we're trailing the car ahead by. 5.0 seconds. Okay, car behind trailing us, 3.1 seconds. Okay, that's us with five laps of fuel remaining, five laps of fuel left. Devon Butler now. Oh, that's not good! Oh no! Devon Butler spins! He's out! Oh, he just misjudges it and clips the curb. What a mess! Devon Butler, with that move, is out of the race. He won't want to see that too many times. We want to see him out of the car, though. That's good news. Big relief there. Although he does still look a bit unsteady on his feet, Crofty. Well, thumbs up to the crowd, but I'd imagine after that, he'll be quite shaken. It's okay. It's okay. It was his hearing. He'd been keeping it from us. I think maybe he'd been trying to keep it from himself. I mean, he was at the height of his career. Yeah. What can you say? How did you feel? I, I was devastated. But, uh, five years in F1. Can't argue with that. I mean, most people never even get the chance, so. And I was still one of the best while I was out there. You ask anyone. How did you feel when Devon left? How did I feel? But if we are going to hit our targets, we need another driver, a permanent one, and fast. But we are mid-season. It's impossible. So, given the circumstances, do you think you can grant us a bit of leeway on the contract? I have the projections. 
If Connorsport doesn't reach fifth place in the constructors this season, the returns simply aren't worth my time. That was always the deal. And it still is. But with a little extra time, perhaps we... Stop! The deal stands. And without Devon driving, there's now little of interest for me beyond the contract. It's just business. There must be something we can do. So, legacy is obviously important to you, David. As a father, I, I totally get that. So if Devon, your son, can't drive, how about your daughter? Why don't we give the seat to Kelly? No. California will not be signed to Connorsport. Why not? Just... <laughs> just think of the commercial opportunities for the team that signs her, hmm? Forget legacy. <laughs> oh, we'd be... You'd be making history. And you'll be giving a phenomenal talent her first break into F1. It's the right thing to do. Come on, you know she deserves it. The daughter. Who took her mother's name to spite me. Nah, she'll never say yes. Why don't you leave that to me? Contract still stands, Ackerman. Fifth place, or I'm out next season. One problem at a time, eh? So many eventful races here in Barcelona over the years. Do you remember Max Verstappen's first win on debut for Red Bull here in 2016? Two years before, we had the dramatic coming together of Hamilton and Rosberg going towards Turn 4. There's always a treat in store as we head back to the Circuit de Barcelona Catalunya for the Spanish Grand Prix. It's an updated track at Catalunya and the popular opinion in the paddock is that we never wanted the chicane in the first place. That's now been gone, the final corner is much faster, and at 2.9 miles and 14 turns, we await the Spanish Grand Prix. So with the race not far away from starting, here's what today's grid rundown looks like. Charles Leclerc lines up on pole position, edging out Sergio Perez, who lines up P2. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Verstappen, Russell, Norris, Hamilton, Gasly, Sainz, Oscar Piastri, Fernando Alonso, Sonoda, Joe, Sargent, Bottas, Jackson, Magnussen, Ocon, Holkenberg, De Vries, Stroll, Albon, and Noah Bell. It's almost time for the lights to go out, so let's head down to the track where preparations are underway. Welcome to the wonderful Catalunya. It's time for the Spanish Grand Prix this weekend. And whilst the season is just a few races old, it's already been one full of drama. So, Natalie Pinkham, who have you got your eye on this weekend? Well, in Formula One, naturally, the conversation is drawn towards those at the top of the standings, both drivers and teams. But I'm really intrigued by the midfield team of Connor Sport. Devon Butler's absence will definitely be felt. There's no doubt about that, both on and off the track. For me, the interesting thing will be how they move forward without him. Indeed, almost as many battles off the track as there are on it for Connor Sport at the moment. And Kasper Ackerman and his team certainly have their work cut out for them this weekend. I know it's been a mad few weeks, mate, but you've always gone well here. So let's get your head down and see what we can do. Come on.
Kate DRS is now available.
approaching the pit window and you're going to be on medium. Mate, that brings you up a place. levels are going to start falling away soon. Look after these tyres now, and want to finish the race on this compound.
Okay, gaps in the car ahead is 8.3 seconds. Noah's in the pits. Noah is in the pits now. Behind, car behind, 9.7 seconds. The car behind you has just come in for the hard tyres. Car behind, running hard tyres. Five laps of fuel remaining.
four laps of fuel remaining. Remaining now. Fantastic drive, that's just fantastic. Amazing, you deserve that race win. Well done, mate. So it's Aiden Jackson propping up Connor Sport here today, but the big news off the track is the speculation about this team and whether or not they'll see out the season with their current lineup. Well, I think they'll have to sign a new driver, Crofty. It's a gamble worth taking. Well, a mid-season signing would get us all talking, I'm sure, but time will tell. A show-stopping performance from the three drop. Well, Cotter Sport are in a bit of an odd situation right now. So, just tell me, what is it like for you today? Uh, yeah. Well, you know, that side of things, that's not really my job. I, I wish Devin well, but uh, 
it doesn't really matter to me who the other driver is, so I'm out there to drive the car as best as I can, and that's all there is to it. Everything else is for Casper and the team to worry about. Most importantly, how is Devon? And how are you finding it without your teammate? Uh, um, yeah, I know as much as everybody else, so, you know, I saw what happened. I'm obviously very worried for him, and as is everybody else, and, you know, I know he's not fit to drive for us right now. As far as I know, he's working super hard to return to the sport, and, um, yeah, I wish him well. Well, there's a lot of talk about what happens if Devon doesn't return. Would Connor Sport be looking for a new driver, do you think? It's not for me to say, but I think it could be a real opportunity for the team to make an exciting signing. Uh, there's a lot of talent out there hungry for a shot in F1, and Connor Sport could find themselves in a perfect position to offer them one. Appreciate it. Thank you. Speak to me? Yes, I did. Shoot. Uh, nothing major, really. Um, to be honest, I just wanted to thank you. Oh. What for? I'm, you know, just doing my job. No, it's more than that. Uh, well, I know why you stayed on the team. And, uh, well, I won't lie to you, it, it's not been easy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can say that again. Yeah, but you really stepped up. It's good for me to know that I've got someone like you to rely on. Always. Yeah. Look, Aiden, I'll warn you, things may not get any easier, at least not for a while, but... Um, well, we've got something in the pipeline, a potential new driver and a damn good one. Who is it? <laughs> I can't say, not, not yet. It's a bit of a gamble, but if they agree, we could have something special. Nice. And, um... How is Devon? Fine. I think... Uh, I'm not sure. I mean, Davidoff has closed the door on that one, but... Yeah, he tells me Devon is in a good place, though. Oh, that's good, that's good. Just you know, keep doing what you're doing, okay? And now, just get out of here. Of course. I'll catch you later, Casper. Hey, boss, got a couple of minutes? Why are you hesitating? You've always dreamt of racing in F1. Not like this. Do you know what he did? Oh, your father? He refused to support me. Said he'd only fund one of his children. Said Devon had better prospects. I'm sorry. I, I didn't know that. Mum used the divorce settlement to help me out, but... And you're only here because he sent you. No. This was my idea. My decision. And this is me asking you, Callie, not your father. We need a replacement and I ask for you because I know how good you are. And that's the truth. I always said I'd do it on my terms, not his. I'll look out for you. Just like I did in F2. Will you keep him away from me? I'll do everything in my power. Everything. To make sure that all you have to think about is driving. We got a deal. You might never get this opportunity again. You know that. Could you take a look at this, please?
Davidov. They stopped me entering the garage just because Callie's in there. It's ridiculous. We've had this conversation. You need to give her space. I'll humor you for an hour, but I don't like being told where I can and can't go around here. Don't forget, you talked me into this. What does that mean? Talked you into what? Signing Callie in the first place. I'm just allowing you to take credit for it, that's all. Yeah, it sounds like you're trying to blame me. Well, if you're right about it, there'll be no blame to allocate, will there? Anything else? You're a busy man. I'll let you go. History has made here today as Callie Mayer, Connor Sport's latest signing, becomes the first female driver of the modern era to participate in an F1 race. What a moment. I've got goosebumps. Now, for those of you wondering at home, only a handful of women have entered at least one Grand Prix over the years, but none have even had the opportunity to qualify since 1992. Italy's Giovanna Amati, for those of you wondering. So today is very much a new dawn here in Baku. And Maya was impressive in qualifying. So let's see what the Grand Prix has in store for her. Yeah, I have to say, it is quite a tight-knit pack out there. Fierce competition all round. I really wouldn't want to call this one. Indeed. We've seen some brilliant driving here today, especially from young Callie Mayer. She seems to have made the transition to F1 as if she was born for it. OK, Kelly, really good start. Keep it up. I'm not finished yet. teammate by 2.5 seconds. Here comes Callie Mayer closing in on her teammate. She's practically on top of me. Aiden, calm down. You're on different strategies. Just let Callie pass. OK, Callie. Aiden's going to let you pass at the next corner. Let's go. Copy. Will Mayer get past her teammate now? Here she comes, but there's contact. Contact between the two Connor Sport drivers. Jackson's out, he gets the worst of it. Mayer's clear. Oh, Jackson's damage looks bad. I think you're right, Crofty, his race is over. Mayer seemed to catch Jackson unawares, though. I'm not sure why. <laughs> what was that? Why didn't she wait for me to move over on the exit? OK, Aiden, are you all right? It's just another butler. I thought he was letting me through. Yeah, I know, Callie. I'm sorry about that, but it's happened now. It's over. Let's get your head down and focus. Come on, let's talk about it later. Copy.
mate, that brings you up a place. That's us with five laps of fuel remaining, five laps of fuel left.
Nice move. Keep going. Okay, we've got four laps of fuel remaining. Okay, be careful, we think you're going to start losing some tyre grip any time now. Right, we've got enough fuel for three more laps. Let's go, final lap. We've only got two laps of fuel left.
Ah, oh, fantastic drive. That's just fantastic. Amazing. You deserve that race win. Well done, mate. Well, in spite of the drama amongst those at the top of the standings, so much of the discussion today has centred around Honor Sport. Absolutely. A bittersweet race for them today. One historic debut, one DNF. I mean, you couldn't write it. And talking of that debut, what did you make of Callie Mayer's first ever start? Well, I am so excited to see Callie racing in F1. It is great for the sport. She is a phenomenal talent. I can't wait to see what the season holds and her career as a whole. And if today is anything to go by, the name Callie Mayer is one that we'll be watching with a lot of interest for many years to come. Here comes your top three making their way down. And do you feel extra pressure at Connor Sport? It must be difficult with your dad looking over your shoulder. <sighs> Look, it's F1. It's not possible for me to feel any more pressure than I already do. So no, it's not an issue. Kelly, have you felt any pushback from anyone in the F1 world? Just with you being the first female driver in the sport? No. Everyone's been amazing, and I'm not the first, I'm just the latest. How's your brother? Are you really just keeping his seat warm? Uh, you'd have to ask him that, um, but he is getting the help that he needs, and no, I have no intention of giving up this seat. What happened out there between you and Aiden today? Uh, it's just a mix-up. Um, I, I thought he was letting me through on the entry, but he clearly had other ideas. We spoke to him earlier, and he said he was deliberate on your part. Any comments on that? Uh, it was just a misunderstanding. You've always gone by Mayer. And now you're in a team financed by your father, driving in your brother's seat. Would you go back to the butler name? Should have expected it, right? I thought you did. It's not what I mean. I mean, I'm a woman. I get it. I'm happy to talk about it. Then what is it? Well, it's always the same, isn't it? So you're a woman, and then every question about Dad, about Devon, about the butler name. Just forget about it. Oh, I can never get away from it, can I? The only question about the race was about Aiden. Well, you know, maybe if we'd let it run a little longer, there would have been... Casper! Don't defend them. Okay. Sorry, you're right. Sorry. <sighs> Look, it's fine. I'll be faster next time. The incident at Baku. Do you think she did it on purpose? She did do it on purpose. Yeah, check the footage. So, you didn't warm to her? We weren't the best of friends, no. Hey, Mum. Callie, I couldn't be prouder, darling. Well done. Oh, thanks, Mum. It was a good race. Felt great out there. Oh, it was a, a good, good race. Oh, no, what is it? What, what do you mean, what is it? What's what? I can hear it in your voice, Mum. It was a good race. No, it's nothing. Go on. No, no, it's just that... You didn't do it on purpose, did you? <laughs> when you clipped poor Aiden. I can't believe you're even asking me. Did you really raise your daughter to behave like that? Well, I'm really not sure. It was an accident, Mum. I'm... I'm hanging up. Oh, of course it was. Uh, bye, darling. Lots of love. Hey, boss. Got another one for you. Andreo? You seen this latest article doing the rounds today? Three weeks later and the press...
Baroness are still going with narrative of the rivalry at Connorsport. Still! They just need an angle for Silverstone. Pay no attention. But they're right, aren't they? It's not like Kali and Aiden are sadly treating each other like teammates. They just need time. It took me a while to warm to Aiden back in the day. Well, that's because you were a grumpy old man. <laughs> yeah. Well, something's never changed, I guess. Ha! Now you're just grumpier and older. I'll leave you to it. Ciao. Bye. Talk to him, Kelly. This is still about Baku, isn't it? behind by 3.9 seconds. Okay, careful with the overtakes. That was a bit risky. We could have received a penalty.
Okay, you're in the top ten. And that's just five laps of fuel remaining. Okay, gap ahead is 1.9 seconds. Five seconds. Good work, great pass. Final lap, final lap, push, push. Okay, 
Okay, just two laps of fuel remaining now. Fantastic drive, that's just fantastic, amazing, you deserve that race win, well done mate. You see this is just another example of the Connor Sport drivers antagonising each other. Yeah but you've got to look at Ackerman as well, he's the one that can sort this situation out and so far that he's letting them run wild. His job is to keep control and no matter what the season, no matter what the driver, Connor Sport just can't seem to gel as a team. So you've got to ask the question, really, what will it take? Well, what a thrilling end to an incredible Grand Prix weekend. Our top three finishers should be... Callie, this is your first ever F1 race at Silverstone in front of the home fans. So just try to put into words what that means to you. Yeah, I mean, just to see the number of fans cheering for me really spurred me on today. And I used to come here as a little girl to watch the races, so it really means everything. It's a dream come true, to be honest. <laughs> well, I have to say it was tight out there once again between you and Aiden. You're not giving each other much space, are you? Yeah, um, I've decided I'm not going to focus any more energy on Aiden. If he wants to start working more closely with me, then he can come and talk. But I think all I can do right now is just focus on my own driving. Now, naturally, there has been a lot of speculation about the role of your father, Davidoff Butler, in securing your seat at Connor Sport. Just what do you say to the critics? OK, I'm not taking any more questions about my father. Ask him about his involvement. Thank you so much for your time. Hi, Mum. Callie. I know, I know. I ended the interview. I need to be more patient. Blah, blah, blah. You need to win the press over, my darling, not make an enemy of them. Yeah, yeah. Natalie Pinkham, Callie, of all people. I just get annoyed when people ask me about Dad, that's all. I know, but she's only doing her job, poor woman. I'm sure she understands that sometimes people don't like the questions. She's on your side, you do know that. This isn't about Natalie Pinkham, Mum. Well... It is, and it isn't. Look, I will be nicer to her in the future. Happy now? I just hope you are. Great race today, darling. Thanks, Mum. I've got stuff to do, OK? I did not like Aiden. Not at all. Why not? I thought he was immature about what happened in Baku. Like, I never really got over it. He was aggressive on track, and the paddock talks. He just wasn't happy at Connor Sport. Thought he was too good for the team. He just 
had a bit of an attitude problem. It's already complicated. And I've told you, they don't need to know. Well, it's your call, of course. But the dishonesty makes me uncomfortable. We'll talk about it later. Yes? Let's make this quick. Or maybe we could give Casper a bit of our time. This wasn't scheduled. What, are you too busy for us now? Just tell them, Casper. Andreo, please. Can we get started? Yeah, Aiden's got a meeting at Mercedes he needs to get to. Enough! Enough! Okay? This... This is what we have to talk about. It has to stop. Understand? If we can't pull together now... If we can't pull together... We are finished. Wait, what does that mean? Andreo? It means that if we don't finish fifth or higher, Butler Global will pull funding. And I don't think we'll find an investor to replace him. Not now. Wait, what? Casper? Yeah, it's true. Well, then we're finished. Andrea? We're finished. So yeah, Dad brought me onto the team and then immediately threatened to shut it down. Why would he do that? It's kind of his thing. Okay, Kelly, I'm sure you've got questions, but we think we know what we're doing here. We've got information that says more rain's coming, and so, because we're the first ones to come and make this change, we can turn it into an advantage. So on your outlap, let's make it all count. Copy that. Aiden's coming in for his stop now. Okay, the stewards have now disabled DRS. DRS is now disabled. Nice move, keep going.
Okay, I think we're still on the right tyres for the time being. Okay, that's us with five laps of fuel remaining. Five laps of fuel left. Okay, so we're leaving our teammate by 22.1 seconds. but I don't think we've got cause to move on to a different tyre yet. DRS has been enabled, DRS is now enabled. And the gap behind us is 16.2 seconds. Okay, we've got four laps of fuel remaining.
Okay, mate, final lap. Keep your concentration and let's bring it home. We've only got two laps of fuel left. Congratulations, Kelly. You keep going like that, you might just prove me wrong yet. Kelly? Well, we said at the time that it might have been too soon, but in hindsight, Common Sport really did make the right call. May have made the pit stop, changed to wet tyres ahead of everybody else. That was a real turning point in the race. Yeah, you've got to get these decisions right, and not everyone did today. It's great to see Connor Sport taking their chances like that. Wonderful race by Mayer if they want to improve on last season they've got to try and do something different well they did that today they timed it well and Maya, well she continues to impress well i'm thoroughly exhausted after the excitement cali great race what do you mean prove you're wrong I was just trying to congratulate you, that's all. Prove you wrong about what exactly? I didn't mean anything by it. I was just saying well done. By reminding me how little you actually believe in me. Callie. You are a piece of work. But it was a great race. You said you'd keep him away from me. I'll talk to him. How is he getting involved on comm? But he didn't ask, he just did it. Yeah, he'll do whatever he wants until someone stops him. I said I'll talk to him. That was a great result out there today. Let's forget about your father, okay? Yeah. Good. Looks like he's found someone else to talk to anyway. Hey, look, I've uh, put measures in place to clamp down on who can access Team Radio from now on. Thanks, I guess. Turns out your father talked Mark into it. Said something like, you're not going to keep me off Team Radio on my own team. <laughs> yeah, well, Mark can be a bit of a pushover at times. Yeah. But listen, you'll need to learn to tolerate your father. He's going to be at this press thing later. Yeah? Well, whatever happened to you, I'll do everything in my power to keep him away from you. Running a team means making compromises. <sighs> but this was your call, right? You decided this? Listen, I have a lot of people I'm trying to keep happy here. And some are more important than others, it seems. I'm really trying here, Kelly. Look, I, I have to go. Let let's talk later. Mum. Callie, I just got your text. To prove him wrong, he's got a nerve. He really gets to me, Mum. I know I shouldn't let him, but I can't bear it. Him and his little games. Call him out on it, Callie. Say something. I did. I spoke to him. And? He said he didn't mean anything by it. He said I did well today. Unbelievable. What else do you expect? An apology? I, I don't know what to do. You keep driving, Callie. That's all you can do right now. The rest is just fluff. If only it were that simple. Oh, fair point. Don't envy you, darling. Not one bit. 
I'll leave you be. Bye, Mum. Hey, boss, got a couple of minutes? Could you take a look at this, please? Everything else looks fine. It's just about that rear wing. I don't want to sacrifice any more downforce. It's okay, it's your call. Now, let's uh, check the weather again in an hour. Oi, oi! <laughs> <laughs> Did you miss me? Hello, sis. Hi, bro. Jackson. Devon. How are you, Devon? I am excited. Very excited to be involved again. Now, you, you pretend I'm not here. You carry on, please. Involved? How? Oh, you know, just a uh, little bit of this, a little bit of... Uh... Involved? How? We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. And what does Andreo say to that? He'll agree, Casper. It's fine. Were they pleased to see you? People are always pleased to see me. And what was on your role? Uh, I guess you might call me a liaison. Yeah, I just, I love to liaise. Dad wanted me to talk to people, keep people's spirits up, give some friendly words of advice, that kind of thing. But uh, it was tough. Yeah, Aiden still had that ego. Still thought he was too good for the team. Wouldn't listen to Casper's advice. That was a problem. And then Andreo, he was worried about the future of the team. He had dad breathing down his neck. And Callie, well, let's just say Callie wasn't really looking for my advice. The whole thing was a mess. I mean, honestly, I'd only been gone five minutes. Two Connor Sport teammates not exactly doing each other any favours this afternoon. For me, they're a little bit too close for comfort. What is Aiden playing at? Tell him to back off. OK, Kelly, he knows. Clearly he doesn't know. <sighs> yeah, same old stuff. Jackson really wants to make a move out there, but Mayer, no chance. Not letting him pass. Towards the curve of Grande we go. He's going for it. It's really close. It's too close. There goes Mayer's front wing. Oh, Aiden Jackson, what happened there? This now seems like a running theme at Connor Sports. Yes, this race is critical for them. When are they going to just pull themselves together? OK, box please, Kelly. Let's get that wing replaced. <sighs> this is a joke. Box this lap, please. Box this lap. Yeah, copy.
up to speed now. Let's get some heat into those tyres. So the gap to the car ahead, 1.6 seconds. And that's just five laps of fuel remaining.
one really well done. Fantastic drive, that's just fantastic, amazing, you deserve that race win, well done mate. So Mayer managed to pull it back in the end, but if this continues, Connor Sport are in real danger of sabotaging their own chances of a decent finish this season. There is so much talent in that team, and yet they're their own worst enemy. The reason they're not making progress is each other. Ridiculous state of affairs. And it's clear that Jackson continues to be the aggressor. Is it personal, Natalie? Well, you know, it does seem that way from the outside looking in, but all I know is they just can't go on like this. Welcome then to the podium. Now, once again, another eventful race out there today for Connor Sport Kelly. Is the team sabotaging its own chance of a decent finish this season? <laughs> Punditry is your job, Natalie. <laughs> no, I am not here to comment on those kind of narratives. I will stick to driving the car, thank you. Everyone is talking about Devon's return to Connor Sport today, so is it good to have him back around again? Devon always means well. Um, he just doesn't always have a, a, let's call it a net positive influence on those around him, but he's here because he cares about the sport and he cares about the team. 
Tell us, if you can, about this rumor circulating about a rift between you and your father, Davidoff. <laughs> well, sorry to disappoint, but no, that's not true. He really cares about the team, and he wants me to do well. Um, it may be fun to say that there's a rift in Connor Sport, especially when there's family involved, but it's just simply not the case. Now, obviously, myself excluded, you've developed a little bit of a reputation for being short with the press. Tell me, honestly, do you regret that in any way? No. Um, when someone starts asking you questions about your personal life uninvited, it's not nice. I don't have to answer any questions I don't want to, and nor should anyone else. That's great, thank you. Go on then, let's have it. That's no way to answer the phone. Say your piece, Mother Dearest. Fine, if you want to be like that. I did say you need to be careful what you tell the media about your father, didn't I? That was the perfect opportunity today, to smooth it all over. But no, you only reinforced what everyone's already saying about you. That's just how I feel. Oh, <sighs> I, you've got a stubborn streak in you. I think it comes from your father. Definitely not mine. He was always so determined, unable to admit to his mistakes. What's your point, Mum? My point is that nobody likes your father. <sighs> Sorry. Just be careful, Cal. Yeah. Thanks, Mum. I'll let you go, darling. Ciao. Casper. Hey, Kelly. I just... I just wanted to apologize. What? Why? Well, I, I said I would keep your father away from you, and here you are in the media answering all these questions about him all the time. <sighs> it's fine, Cass. They were always going to ask me that stuff. Yeah, I know, but, uh, you know, thanks for bending the truth a little out there. It does show the team in a better light. <laughs> I've got no issues lying about something that's none of their business. I'm just sorry that you had to. Don't worry about it, Cass. It's no big deal. Yeah, but it is to me. So, thank you, Kelly. Slanging off? Hey. <laughs> Scared the life out of me, mate. Ah, I didn't mean to. Picking up any tips? I don't think they like the short strays here. You didn't mind them, did you? <sighs> I love this track. Always do well here. Well, used to. How are you doing, Demo? Me? Golden, mate. Loving life. Yeah, sure. You know what it's like to leave all this behind, don't you? That was the most difficult thing I've ever done. Yeah, well, uh, like that. But, uh, I didn't choose this, Casper. I didn't, um, I don't know. I know. Well, you came back, right? How's it treating you? Ups and downs. Hmm. How's our old teammate doing? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I don't think he's happy here. <laughs> he still thinks he belongs in that top team, see? He's never let it go. That's the problem. You know, I, uh... I could have a word with him. I mean, if you think that might help. Nah, it's, uh... It's all a bit delicate. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, I understand. No, Devon, I mean it. Yeah. Scout's on him, mate. Hey, we need your input on this one.
Did Casper really want you to talk to Aiden? Eh, I read between the lines. Look, Casper's good at lots of things, but I, uh, I know people. Yeah, I know how to get in their heads. And I wanted to help Dad, help the team, so... Uh... Leave me alone. Listen, I'm just saying, mate, if you were such an incredible driver, you wouldn't be a connoisseur, would you? Sorry, it's the truth. No offense. Well, maybe I won't be here next season. <laughs> Dude, you know what your problem is? Yeah, you. You think you're better than the team. I remember, I remember when Aiden Jackson was just, just happy to be behind the wheel of an F1 car. We all liked that guy far better than this one. He never liked me. <sighs> no. But Casper did. Once upon a time. Oh, you're different now. You think you're too good for the team. Your head's stuck in some imaginary big three seat in Cloud Cuckoo Land, mate. No, no, no. You have got to drive the car you're in. You're lecturing me about ego. A subject I know well. Oh, right. I get it. So you're allowed to be cocky, but I'm not. Is that it? There's a difference. How can there possibly be a difference? This isn't you. This isn't you, mate. Oh, get lost. Be true to myself. Drive the car I'm in. The wisdom of Devon Butler. Should I be living my best life, too? Drive the car you're in, mate, yeah? Ciao. Marina Bay hosted a Grand Prix that briefly ran in the 60s and 70s, but the Garden City re-entered the calendar for good in 2008. We missed it for a couple of years, but it was great to come back to the Singapore Grand Prix. We're here at the Marina Bay Street Circuit today, located in the heart of Singapore. The circuit consists of 23 corners, 13 to the left and 10 to the right. It's a track that's incredibly technical, so don't expect to see the drivers taking too much of it at full throttle. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. Lewis Hamilton lines up on pole position, just ahead of George Russell, who starts this event from P2. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Sainz, Oscar Piastri, Perez, Fernando Alonso, Verstappen, Leclerc, Norris, Jackson, Joe, Ocon, Stroll, Mayer, De Vries, Magnussen, Sonoda, Gasly, Bottas, Sargent, Holkenberg, and Alex Albon picks up the last spot on the grid. It's almost time for those five red lights to go out then. Let's see who can prevail today. Well, it's a beautiful night here at the Marina Bay Circuit and as ever, a really enthralling Singapore Grand Prix ahead of us. That's right, Crofty. And while there's not many surprises at the top of the standings right now, there's a lot to watch out for further down the pack. One driver I'll be definitely keeping my eye on is Connor Sports' Aidan Jackson. He's been less than consistent so far this season. Aiden, you know what you're doing here. Let's lock in and give it everything. Show us what you got.
Nice move. Keep going.
approaching the pit window and you're going to be on mediums. Okay, the pit window's open, so let's box this lap, box this lap. Okay, so we're leading our teammate by 39.0 seconds.
Okay, be aware, the grip levels are going to start falling away soon. Pit strategy complete. See these tyres through to the end now. Job. Nice overtake. Okay, Callie's in the pits. Callie's in the pits now.
that's us with five laps of fuel remaining. Five laps of fuel left. Four laps of fuel remaining.
starting the final lap of the race. Final lap. OK, we've only got one lap of fuel remaining. Fantastic drive, that's just fantastic, amazing, you deserve that race win, well done mate. Well the results are in, there we have it, what a race that was. The sheer grit and determination shown by some of the drivers out there today, Crofty, was nothing short of incredible. Elbows out especially from Aidan Jacks, loved his race today, and he finally delivered the sort of performance that we know that he's capable of. So whatever they're saying to him over at Cover Sport, he seems to be listening to. The faces on our top three look so incredibly happy. Now, Aidan, you have had your ups and downs this season, but tell me, on the whole, are you pleased with your overall performance? Today's race should be a normality, not an exception. You know, if I can get a few more performances like today, then, yeah, I'll be much happier. OK, I'm going to be cheeky, go straight for the jugular. If you had to choose a teammate between Callie and Devon, who would it be? Um, I'm getting into trouble whatever I say here, aren't I? Can I have Casper back as a teammate instead? I'll talk him out of retirement. Now, Aidan, you have recently hinted that you're not entirely happy at Connor Sport. Tell me, is it true? I think of Connor Sport in the same way I would my family. There are a lot of personalities to manage, but we're a tight-knit group in this team. We might not always see eye to eye, but in the end, we all want the same thing. There's been wild speculation on whether or not Connor Sport can even be on the grid next season, so can you tell us more? People were quick to judge the investors, but I think they care about this team and uh, they want it to do well. I can't imagine anyone pulling out investment at this stage. That's great, thank you. Hi, Davidoff. Aiden, appreciate the support today. Uh, yeah, no worries. You're right, the investors do care about this team. We all wanted to do well. Good to see you putting that message out there. It's true though, isn't it? You're not gonna suddenly pull out of Connor Sport. The team's doing well. It really doesn't matter, Aiden. Connor Sport will get fifth and all this speculation will become irrelevant. Well, what happens if we don't make fifth? My position on that matter has always been clear. Thanks again, Aiden. Come on, I just want to check out. Why? Because he told you to. Stop making this about him. Just talk to me. We raced in a lot of the same races growing up, and 
one of us would always have a better race than the other. So in the car on the way home, one of us would be happy and the other would be completely miserable. There was no middle ground. It was like it was impossible for us both to be happy at the same time. And it's kind of been the same ever since. Look, it's my job to talk to the drivers, Kelly. Yeah, and who gave you that job? Why are you being like this? It's not even me you're angry with. Maybe it is. Oh, really? This again? We were kids, Kelly. You left me behind. Oh, come on, what was I supposed to say? Oh, oh, thanks, Dad, for, for, for continuing to invest in my career, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to decline, just in case I hurt poor Kelly's feet. Of course not. And what? It didn't have to be a choice, Dev. He had the money to fund both of our careers. I just... I wanted you to... fight for me. He never listened to me. He always listened to you. Well, we were young. Yeah. But we're adults now. Yeah. Well, if it's any consolation, I'm not much competition anymore. <laughs> you never were. I'm sorry, Kelly. For everything. You were always faster than me. <laughs> There, I said it. Nice try. I mean it. And did you mean it? <laughs> of course not. Faster than me. No, 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 no. She was never faster than me. She'd love that. No. But if there's one thing my old man taught me, it's that sometimes people need to hear what they need to hear. You know? Hey, Mum. Cal, I'm reading more and more about these funding issues. Only an issue if we don't get fifth, apparently. What do you make of it all? Well, he won't... He won't really do it, surely. I mean, it's only been two seasons, for goodness sake. And Connorsport certainly isn't the worst team on the grid. You have a real way with words, Mum. <laughs> What's your father have to say for himself? I have no idea. You've still not spoken to him? I'm sure you can relate. Yes, but I mean, I don't have to work with the man. Look, you don't have to like him. You only have to talk to him. <sighs> you sound like Devon. Oh, maybe Devon has a point. Yeah, yeah, okay. Thanks, Mum. I'm going now. Lots of love. Bye. Absolutely. Yeah. Why are you doing this? I saw him in the paddock. This would have been Sao Paulo. And I, um, yeah, I finally spoke to him. I just wanted to know why. There's something's come up, I'll uh, call you back. Kelly, so I'm uh, allowed to talk to you now. Why are you doing this? Doing what? Why are you being so hard line about this. For this to be a worthwhile investment, Connorsport Racing must be successful. It's just business. It's not, though, is it? Excuse me? Well, why am I in the team if it's just business? Why was Devon? You can't keep involving your family in this and then hiding behind it's just business. This is one of the biggest investments I have ever made. I must take care of the business. Come on. Who do you think will uh, inherit it after I'm gone? Well, Devon, obviously. I'm, I'm not interested in any of it. These uh, matters are complex. They all benefit the business. They all benefit the family. And ultimately, they all benefit you. You said this the last time you tried to stop me racing. I didn't buy it at 12, and I certainly don't buy it now. I don't understand what goes on in that head of yours. You threatened to end my F1 career, 
And then you claim it's for my benefit. Have you any idea how much money I have ploughed into the team? <sighs> yeah, that's the thing with you. Money. Nothing changes. I wouldn't expect you to understand. No, Dad. I wouldn't expect you to. You need to be more realistic, that's all. Not everyone survives in F1. You know that. Fifth in the standings. Fifth. Safety car's in this lap. Repeat, the safety car is in this lap. That means it's our chance to shine. Come on, you can do this. Let's go. No, no pressure then. Green flag. seconds. DRS is now enabled.
Keep it up. Five laps of fuel remaining. Okay, good work, great pass. Okay, keep an eye on that gap ahead, please. 2.0 seconds. Okay, so we're leading our teammate by 1.8 seconds. Okay, we've got four laps of fuel remaining. You're now running in third, P3. Okay, this is your final lap, final lap of the race. Okay, just two laps of fuel remaining now.
fantastic drive. That's just fantastic. Amazing. You deserve that race win. Well done, mate. Well, what a fantastic race that was. Absolutely loved it. But Natalie, do you think we see Connor Sport next season? Rumor safe, maybe not. I hope so. I feel like they deserve it. They've been box office for me. They've taken chances, they've been bold in all their moves, and ultimately, that's great for us and for the fans. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more, but there's not much of the season left, and they'll be hoping they can carry this form into the final stages. Time will tell. A show-stopping performance from the... Th Wow, Kelly, a really strong performance out there today. Just tell me, though, how big a role did the safety car play? Yeah, I mean, I really fancied my chances after the safety car. Obviously, it's going to really disrupt the race, but I was able to take advantage of it today. Um, I saw an opportunity and I went for it, and it worked out well. Kelly, your first F1 season is nearing an end. It must feel like a long road, but clearly you've put a lot into it. And is there anyone else that's been particularly influential this season? Influential? Um, well, yeah, I'd say my father has been influential, just not necessarily in the best way. I don't mind him funding the team, but I do mind when he starts trying to run it. And tell me, I'm not sure I could do it, but how has it been working so very closely with your family? Um... I treat those relationships as purely professional. Um, outside of races, that's another matter, but at race weekend, these are people I have to work with to do my job. They may also happen to be family, but that's not something I pay much attention to. There are rumours circulating that Connor Sport may not be around next season. Can you comment? Um, that sounds like a question for our investors. Um, I'm sure we'd all appreciate a public statement on the matter. That's great. Thank you. Okay, so we are running two quite different setups out there today. And you don't need me to tell you how it... You don't need me to tell you how it... Davidoff, that's enough! I'm sorry? Get out. What on earth are you talking about? I've had an entire season of you whispering in people's ears. I'm asking you to leave the meeting. You can't be serious. This is not your team. And after today, it might not even exist. So get out! and let those of us who actually care about the result do our jobs. We'll talk about this later, Agatha. You can threaten me after the race. So be it. Coming, Devon? Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking I might actually stay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna stay. Well, that's up to you. Okay, listen. You all know what's at stake. If we race as individuals today, the team dies. The only way we can survive this, the only way that any of us are coming back next season, is together. We all understand this? No, no. Aiden, Callie, look at me. You look at me. We understand this, yes? If you put yourself ahead of the team today, there's no more team. Callie, we got this. Yeah. And, um, I'm sorry if I was ever. Wow. What? Are you apologizing? Yeah. <laughs> I will forgive you on one condition. What's that? You get your share of the points. All right. Deal. <laughs> Chin up.
Hey, did you find him? I didn't look too hard, to be honest. <laughs> Does Davidov ever sulk? Hard to imagine. Listen, I hope I haven't caused you problems. I snapped it. It was unprofessional. Not at all, Casper. It was a delight to watch. You think it will affect his decision? I've given up speculating, Cass. At this stage, nothing would surprise me. Yeah, well, we better get that result then. I guess we better add. And good luck today, Casper. Whatever happens, I'm so grateful for all you've done. Look, it's... it's been my pleasure. Connor Sport deserves to succeed. If the fates are kind, Casper. If the fates are kind. <laughs> I'm trackside. I'll see you there. Yeah, cool. I'll be a few minutes. You know, before the race begins, anything is possible. Anything. On the one hand, you have the true icons of the sport, certain drivers, certain teams who set the pace, who you expect to do well. On the other hand, you have the underdogs. And we are always there, always pushing for another place, another point, looking for the smallest opportunity that tiniest mistake we can punish and in that moment just before lights out it's like it's like the world holds its breath you know everybody just waits the air is heavy you know and I knew whatever happened corner sport had made its mark on the history of the sport And I was at peace with that. So you weren't nervous? Are you kidding? <laughs> so we know how it stands right now. But just how different might it be when the checkered flag waves here in Abu Dhabi? And it slides out, and away we go. Okay, Aiden, let's see if we can start moving through the field. It's time to push. Come on, you've got this. Copy that.
top ten. Down the main straight we go. Here goes Jackson again, moving up the field. What a great race for him. Yeah, it really is so far, Croft. I mean, it's a circuit he really enjoys. Remember the race in 2021 that he put together there? It was fantastic stuff back then. Who could forget it? Connor Sport need a performance just like that today. May is doing okay. Jackson really delivering. Great stuff, Aiden. Come on, I think we can get one more place here. Push, push. Uh, something's not right. Assessing, assessing, stand by. I'm losing speed. Heading down the back straight now. He's in a great spot, but hang on, he's slowing. He's slowing, something is very, very wrong. Yeah, I think he's got a problem here, Crofty. I wonder what it is. Could it be engine related? Look, they're throwing their hands in the air on the pit wall, and he's out. And yeah, that's the engine gone. 2023 is over for Aidan Jackson. It's a dramatic exit, and it wasn't what he was hoping for. Something happened up there? Yeah, engine failure, I'm afraid. Aiden is out of this race. Repeat, Aiden's out of the race. Did you get that? Aiden's out. I heard. What? Let me speak for that. Why? Just give me the headset. Sure about this? I'm sure about everything. That's what concerns me. Kelly. Devin? Yeah, we've had a chat. We think it's best if you uh, don't push the car too hard. Huh? Why? Look, you're way back, Cal, OK? We, we don't want to blow your engine too, so just, just cruise it in and finish the race. It's got to be realistic here. Copy. Sorry, is this a team order? No. Casper agrees. It's just not going to make up that much ground. It can't be done. Just cruise it in, Cal. Trust me, you watch her go. Brings you up a place. Nine laps of fuel to go, nine laps left. Managing your tyres, manage your tyres.
OK, here's the gap that we're trading the car ahead by. 1.9 seconds. between yourself and the car behind. with five laps of fuel remaining, five laps of fuel left.
okay, we've got four laps of fuel remaining. We've only got two laps of fuel left. Okay, final lap, let's go, final lap. incredible performance by her today. Connor Sport sure will be very delighted with that one. And if you believe the rumours, Ant, this is a team whose future has been in doubt. Surely, though, they've done enough to return next season. I think they've been wonderful to watch. Hey, Devon. Not bad today, sis. Not bad at all. You did that on purpose. Did what on purpose? Oh, come on, Dev. Cruise it in. I don't know what you're talking about, mate. You, you Technically, you went against the team order. Poor form, that. <sighs> I 
I can't believe I missed it at the time. It seems so obvious now. Listen, you want to lay off the sauce, Cal. Seriously, it's a bit embarrassing. I mean, <laughs> I'm surprised Casper let you, to be honest. Really surprised. Okay, I'm going now because you're not making any sense. Okay? Ciao! Yeah. Ciao. Dad. California. That good enough for you? Uh, look, I, I thought we maybe could grab a coffee tomorrow before we head off. My flight's not till three. Yeah, um... I have a chat, talk about next season. It'd be good for us. Um... Well, think about it anyway. The offer stands. You make it sound like a negotiation. It always is with us, Kelly. You let me know. It was amazing. I'm not sure I've ever seen a race like that. I was wrong about Callie. And how did you feel about the engine failure? There's no such thing as the perfect car. The one that failed us was the same one that got us here in the first place. So, you've just got to drive the car you're in. Well, everyone's an individual. Which means that everyone is, um motivated a little differently. Take Devon as an example. He always responds well to having his ego brushed, to being told that he's the best. His greatest fear is failure, so it gives him further to fall, keeps him hungry. Callie, on the other hand, uh, has an innate drive to prove people wrong. If someone tells her something's not possible, she'll do everything in her power to achieve it. A sort of uh, stubborn determination that can be harnessed. <laughs> and then there's Aiden. I mean, when he started in F1, people thought he was a nice guy, but he was incredibly ambitious. It's just what makes Aiden tick. Which is why I may have started a rumor or two about uh, interest from other teams during his time at Connor Sports <laughs> to stoke that ambition. Keep his eyes on the horizon. A lot of people might see that as manipulative, wouldn't you agree? Well, of course. <laughs> Motivation is manipulation. It's the same thing. Is it? Look, the end justifies the means. After all, it's just business. Looking forward to next season? Just let me at it. Will you stay next season? I've told Casper I'll stay if he does. Do you still have a job after your run-in with Davidoff? <laughs> well, we'll see. We did it! We secured the funding! What a team! And that's all that matters. Right now, yes, that's all that matters. <laughs> okay, so uh, we're done? Yeah? Cool.